What is e-commerce? Basically in e-commerce, there are two types of what we call selling online and you can split it right down. The middle one would be what you would call digital marketing. Digital marketing is where you're an expert or guru and you're doing either coaching or consulting or teaching people how to save money or how to make money, how to get their brain right or how to how to get their body right, you know it's usually something like that it's how to lose weight, how to get healthy, how to start a business and it's videos teaching the kind of the stuff. It's the education of some sort and it can be very lucrative but the problem with doing digital marketing is you can't get started today. You just can't because you have to create a product and in order to create a product, you have to get membership software and you have to learn how to screencast videos, get a good microphone, learn how to do a PowerPoint presentation, then you have to learn how to do short and longer training sessions and you should be know how to edit those videos and load them up to your membership site, and that's just creating the product. That could take 30 or 60 90 days. From there you have to create your website and in order to do that you don't just put a static website up, you've got to create a sales funnel. A sales funnel is usually used something like click funnels or groove funnels and then you've got to learn how to get on video, and that's before we even talk about what it takes to get a marketing message right. You've got to get a camera, you've got to get a backdrop, you've got to get a microphone, you've got to get somebody to handle the camera for you and then you've got to learn how to speak on camera, and if you don't you've got to learn how to write a very very good script and put it into a teleprompter, and read off off a teleprompter. There is a learning curve so that's the point, you can't get started tomorrow. There are certain things that you could learn in that entire process but at the end of the day you know to learn how to get on a webinar or get in front of a video or create a page you do have to learn some type of not only copywriting but the copywriting is if you just write the sales copy. If you want to do a webinar you want to get on video and you have to win salesmanship right away. How many times have we seen a video where people are just saying things like, thank you for coming to my website. Take a look around, and you know they just don't have the salesmanship part down. It can be learned but again add that to the learning curve. Now the next type of e-commerce we are going to talk about takes the guru out of the business. And this is what we're gonna teach you now. What if we show you where you can get products, and then we show you exactly how to list those products on Groove Card, and then we will show you show you exactly who to target. That's the beautiful thing about Groove Cart is all you have to do is follow the templates that they have and you can just plug in that process and go. There's nothing that says well I'm not good on camera or I don't like doing voiceovers all that's taken out. Buyer types. Research buyer. What types of products can you sell? There are two types of buyers, research buyers and impulse buyers. A research buyer is someone that is looking to buy a new smart TV for their kid's bedroom and for the next three weeks himself and his wife they're going to research it and they may even go to a physical store, they're going to certainly look online, they're gonna comparison shop for that product and they might even do some Google searches and things like that and that's what a research buyer is. Right there this is a planned purchase, this does not just kind of smack them in the face and say we want this product now. That is an impulse buyer. Impulse buyer. An impulse buyer is someone that sees something and it just triggers oh wow this is really me I love this. Or, they could be in the process of being the research buyer and become an impulse buyer while looking at the TV online they can see the newest gadget for TVs and think well I want that right now, it's an impulse. So those are the two types of buyers we've identified. I've got some examples for you. Let's say you decide to sell products on Amazon. What you're dealing with is not only Amazon but many other people also selling the same product that you're competing with. You are competing for ads across of the search query, and then you're competing with sponsored ads, and then you're competing with Amazon Basics and Amazon Choice, and while you are doing that Amazon is getting all of this intelligence into their platform and they constantly knock off different people in things like batteries and HDMI cables, all these things they can source the products from cheaper. And you also have to deal with reviews. The type of marketing you need to do for this is for the research buyer and it is known as intent-based marketing. People go to different sites come they do research they're comparing different brands, different models, and many times they don't buy because they're getting confused. They start asking friends which TV are you using. 
they're looking at different reviews and this is not the type of marketing that we suggest doing. Unless you are able to scale like Amazon and compete on price we suggest focusing on impulse marketing. E-commerce solution stores like Shopify and of course Groovecart can help you sell to impulse buyers. People that did not wake up this morning and say I want to go buy sneakers or I want to go buy a hat or I want to go buy something that has to do with, with dachshunds or poodles or pitbulls or, or rottweilers or anything like that. Things that a people are madly passionate about. These people when they see something on Instagram or they see something on Facebook they say, oh my goodness that is exactly for me. They're not doing research, they usually buy on the spot and if they don't buy on the spot you can remarket it to them later. Groove Cart Business Options Groove Cart has two different models built in. First, they have something called Print on Demand and the other one is called Dropshipping. Print on Demand So let's start with the first one. Print-on-demand are things like apparel like t-shirts, v-necks, sweatshirts and hoodies and you know different things like that than the other hot selling items of course are coffee mugs and hats. Then one unique thing they have is what is known as full wraps, that's layer app that's not just putting a label on an image on the front of a shirt or the front and the back of the shirt with words, this is literally putting a full wrap pattern around a sneaker or a backpack or leggings or a t-shirt or a hat or sneakers or socks or flip-flops. Think of it like car wraps you have probably seen. This is nearly impossible technology that you get with Groovecart and it's built right in for free. The next is something like custom jewelry engraving using an app integration with Sling Lee. You can have jewelry and you can have it custom engraved. These things just sell absolutely like crazy and on top of that you know there are things like wood carvings and like military dog tags for you know for family members or kids or dogs. With print on demand you can set up set up your own white label brand. Dropshipping model. The next one is dropshipping. Dropshipping is a little bit different than print on demand. What's the difference between these two? Print on demand means it's customized right at the point of sale like if it's a t-shirt that gets pulled from the supplier's inventory and it gets laser printed and then sent to the customer. Dropshipping is typically products that already exist in a supplier's inventory and will be sent out in the exact state to the customer without anything needed to be put on the product. So these are things like you normally see on Facebook like gut buster, water bottles, blenders or you know anything like electronics like drones, kitchen gadgets, iPhone skins, pet products, things like that and that is dropshipping. Sling Lee. Groovecart has a deal with Sling Lee where you can get a free Sling Lee account for 90 days. Sling Lee is a $997 product and they have a special pricing deal for Groovecart members after the 90 day period. When you get deluxe third party solutions like Sling Lee and Dropified, what happens is you've got deluxe ready to go listings, they've got all the descriptions written out for you. They have all the variants done they create product lines so if you've got one product in a small black you can get it in small medium large extra large double extra large and black white red and then you can get it the hoodie sweatshirt the v-neck the t-shirt the baseball cap the coffee mug and they create the entire line they write all the product descriptions for you and with one click it builds every single one of those products into your store I'm not going to attempt to do the math but I think if you figure out all the time it takes to do all that stuff and how to do that stuff one by one you're going to get excited about how easy it is to get started. And with the Sling Lee deal you get 90 days to play with it, to see if it works, and trust me when I tell you in 90 days you'll know if it is worth $297 a year with what this will do to save you time it's gonna be one of the best things that you will find. Dropified. They also are doing integrations with Dropified which a dropshipping app that is like AliExpress. However, Dropified provides deluxe sourced vetted products. They work with vendors that are reputable will help with returns and you get pre-written listings along with ad copy and bullets and colors and variations and so when you find a product it'll pull it into Groovecart automatically for you and you don't have to worry about if it's shipping from China or the people going out of business or changing the price and you weren't aware. Everything gets updated automatically. AliExpress. Most people getting into dropshipping for the first time look to AliExpress as a supplier. They see that AliExpress is cheap and think they can make easy money with it. 
Groove Cart has easy AliExpress integration. However, personally, I do not like using them as a supplier. The products and individual suppliers are not vetted. Your store could be down for weeks with some of the long Chinese holidays and you have long shipping times. I just think it is a flawed way of trying to do business. That said, Groove Cart does make it easy to use. Upsells. I want to go over with you something you may or may not have heard of and it is expressions that's called an order bump. That's a pre-transaction upsell, that is a post-transaction upsell, that's an upsell, that's a downsell, that's a cross-sell. If you're a little bit confused between what some of those things are all right I'm gonna break down for you today what all of these things are, not only that I'm going to show you how they are in Groove Cart so pretty much the first thing I want to do is just bifurcate. Let's just talk about that. You always have a lead product and anything else that you can get people to buy other than what you're originally selling them or what they came there for is known as an upsell, they're all upsells okay you can bifurcate that and say there's a pre-transaction upsell and a post-transaction upsell. A pre-transaction upsell is anything that you can get them to agree to buy or add to the cart before they enter their credit card right so if you've been to Amazon and on Amazon, you've seen something along the lines. Customers also buy this, so what we have right here is an example of a pre-transaction upsell, it's known as a bundle. Groove Cart does this easily for you. You making them buy more of what they came for today and this is happening before they enter their credit card. So if you're taking notes a pre-transaction upsell is when we can get them to add more things to the cart or up the price before they enter their credit card so this becomes a bundle. You can give people incentives to buy more, you know you've seen this in all the infomercial online. This is direct marketing it's been happening for years so when you see these things realize these are profit centers for you. Things like, get one for the garage another one for the RV, when you're selling flashlights and things like that right and then after that, when we add to the cart we also notice look at this flashlight holder or lantern, and these are different things that we still haven't added our credit card information yet and we're finding ways to get people to buy once the first product that they go to buy is called Shy Yes. They've made a minor commitment they haven't put that credit card in and we're gonna softly add some other stuff. Now, we're gonna we're going to talk about what's known as a post-transaction upsell and there are three things that happen in a post-transaction upsell that are all the same thing. They're known as an upsell or one-click upsell and a one-click upsell simply means that you're not sending the person to put their credit card information again, they've already done it and all they have to do is click yes one more time and it's automatically charging their credit card and shipping it out for them. That's an upsell since it's happening after the credit card is a post-transaction upsell but we just call these upsells. What is a downsell? A downsell is simply the next upsell or sometimes somebody may say you might say something here could be a down so would you like to buy the 10 pack for 50% off and if they say no you would say well how about the 5 pack for 50% off that's a downsell. It's pretty much the same thing that you just offered them but you're saying okay well how about for a little less. I give you a little less right that's a downsell but essentially it's just another daisy chained upsell we use the terminology downsell because we're downselling them on quantity and in price. I'll give you an example you've bought up you've bought a product and they say would you like 500 templates for $99 and you say no and they say well how about 400 and 400 templates for only $39 well that's a steal I'm gonna take that right. Okay so upsell 1 to upsell 3 that's known as your upsell chain, they're all upsells, they'll say yes to this, no to that, yes to this, whatever the case is but for the most part they're all upsells and the final post transaction upsell is called a cross sell. A cross sell is say these products they bought were all about fishing. They've checked out and they've bought fishing rods and a bag about fishing, a backpack, and flies for fly fishing and these were all upsells. We call them upsells because they're within the product line they're all the same design that they have a tie into the first product they bought so we call them upsells cross sells or upsells but they're a little different. For example they bought the sneakers and now you've got a pair of socks in the backpack and they're all related to the same design and so now we know something about the person, we know this person loves fishing, in this case they love the outdoors so in this case they might like beach umbrellas or sunscreen or anything you could possibly think of in the outdoors that's a totally unrelated product, but we know for sure it's what the buyer is interested in. 
you don't have to do this tap the time of purchase, you can let them go through with this transaction and start your upsell process a day later or after they have even just received their order. That is when you begin your cross-sell process. You simply send him an email and just say hey would you like to you know we noticed that you're into this or that and you bought this line from us you and we thought you'd be interested in in our beach kit, it comes with an umbrella and and a frisbee and a towel and a cooler. You get the point, but at the end of the day those are just upsells. Groove Digital Accounts with a free email autoresponder to allow you to do this. Page Conversion Boosters Page conversion boosters are things that you need to do throughout your checkout that are just one click, easy to add on that that will make you money. They will help you capture leads. Why do you want to do that is so you can build a list. This allows you to do follow-up emails and cross-sell later even if they don't buy this product. Maybe you can get him back tomorrow by sending them coupons and by doing so incentivize the lead person on your site to buy. Groove Cart gives you all of the things that are known that help increase conversions that you have to pay more for Shopify. They have built their platform with sales and conversions in mind for you. They want you to increase the average order value. Okay now remember who's a master at this. Amazon, we showed you it's great if you just buy a TV but Amazon knows every single place where I could add a bundle and an upsell in a quantity and the variant and all these different things an installation and a warranty, all those different things that supermarkets do like this too. Like the same types of strategies where they put the milk in the back so they can get you to walk through the impulse sections of the store to the magazines and the gum and all these different things. If you have ever been to a Best Buy they put all candy and snacks and sodas and all those different things near the checkout stands, believe it or not, that little thing adds millions to their bottom line. And then right at the register, they say something like would you like the two year warranty with that TV and you say yes and I'm gonna forget that I bought it and never use it. Alright next let's talk about where you can find these on page conversion boosters so when you log into Groove Cart you click on the app manager and they have a lot of them so you're gonna simply click on conversion boosters. I want to let you know that there is also one in tools and utilities and that's the spinner wheel option but I personally think those are bad to use. Another conversion booster in Groove Cart is the social proof pop-ups as it definitely increases conversion. We track this through numerous stores but we've realized that on mobile can be a little annoying. Social proof is important, say there are two pizza places across the street from one another, one is empty, the other one has a long line and people are waiting 25 minutes for their pizza. Which restaurant do you think has better pizza? Well the truth is we don't know, there is no there's no way to tell for sure. What might have just happened is a really big family of 18 people that came in on a bus decided to get online and people said well that's the busy line the food must be good and everybody keeps getting in line. We tend to believe what looks like social proof and we tend to think that well if that's busy the pizza must be good.